Okay, so welcome. And uh, today we're going to talk about the properties of logarithms. Okay, so um, we haven't proved any of these, which we will. But notice that if a and b are greater than zero and r is a, a, rash, is a rational number, then these properties of logarithms hold. The logarithm of 1 is 0. The logarithm of the product AB is the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. And then also similarly, the natural log of the quotient of A and B is equal to the natural log of A minus the natural log of B. And then the final one, natural log of A raised to a rational power, uh, R is uh, equal to r times the natural log of a. So we can pull the exponent out in front. Okay, so in the next uh, video, we're going to, uh, well, you know what, let's do it now. Let's uh, prove these. Um, so let's start with the first one, okay? So the first one is that the natural log of uh, one is zero. Okay. Now that one we we pretty we it's defined to be that way. So that's not that's pretty straightforward. Okay. So we defined the natural log of one to be zero. Okay. And so that was defined in the definition. Right, so the definition, so really that's not a proof, but that's just by proof by definition, right? So the definition of um, the natural log of one was to be zero, because that's equal to uh, one to one of the natural log of t dt, which was defined to be equal to uh, zero. Okay, now what about the second one? So now we want to prove that um, the natural log of AB is equal to the sum of the logs. Okay, so let's prove that. Okay, so Let's do this. Um, so the natural log of AB is equal to, again by the definition of the natural log, is from 1AB of 1 over T dt, right? Okay, well let's split this up. Let's split this up arbitrarily and let's start with this one. Say, okay, let's go from one to A, right? Of one over T dt. And we'll add um, the second piece, which goes from A to AB of one over T dt, okay? so. Now you'll see why I did this in a minute, okay? So notice I've got A here and A here, right? So I've got this integral and this integral that I'm adding together to get this integral. So all I did was decompose into two integrals. Now, on this one, I'm going to do a U substitution, okay? And the U substitution I'm going to use is, is, a very, is specific, okay? Um, I'm going to uh, use um, u equal to t over a. And you might think, why in the world did I use uh, that u substitution? It doesn't seem right but watch so now u equals this du will equal what well one over a 
dt. Okay, now you might be thinking, okay, well, so what? Okay. So now, what happens to A or here when I do U? If U is T over A, now I've got to change the limits of integration. Okay? So what happens? Let's, let's write it over here. So this equals the integral from 1 to A of 1 over T dt plus. Okay, now, when T is A, right? We're dealing with T. When T is A, U is 1. Or excuse me, hold on. Yeah, that's right. And when U is AB, what happens when, when T is AB, right? When T is AB here, what happens to you? U? U becomes B. And what happens to this? Well, 1 over t becomes what? It becomes what? What does it become? So, u is equal to t over a du is 1 over a so again, if I substitute, right, I got to substitute t, so this becomes what? a du equals dt right? equals dt and t equals au right solve for t t equals au so what do you get you get 1 over u du right okay now, we can solve this, right? <clears throat> this becomes, by definition, the natural log of A plus, and this becomes, by definition, the natural log of B. And we're done. Now, what about, uh, I'm going to skip the third one. Let's go to the fourth one. Right? And so we want to prove that the natural log of um, a to the r is equal to r times the natural log of a. Okay, so that's what we want to prove. Well, let's first note a couple of things. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we want to note is let's do the derivative of um, x to the r. Okay. So we can look at x to the r a couple ways and see what happens. Okay, so if we take the integral of well, how do we want to do this? Um, uh, let's 
see, let's do x to the r, and let's do the derivative with respect to x. And what do we get? We get um, just using the power rule, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Keep forgetting the natural log. We want the derivative of the natural log of x to the r. That's what we want. Okay. So remember, so what are we going to do? The chain rule. So we do the inside. That's going to be what? We multiply, we reduce, right? We multiply by this and reduce the exponent. So we're going to get r times x to the r minus 1. And then we're going to do it the outside. And remember, what do we do with the outside? It's, it's a natural log. So the derivative of the outside gives us 1 over whatever the argument is on the inside. So this is going to be multiplied by 1 over uh, x to the r. And so what does this give us? This gives us r x to the r minus 1 over x to the r. Now notice that um, this exponent on this, they're the same base, right? And this exponent is 1 more than this exponent. Or if you want to look at this exponent is 1 less than this exponent. So when you cancel these out, you're going to end up with r over x, okay? So there's that. So notice the result that we got there. Now, let's take the other form. Uh, let's take r natural log of x. And let's take the derivative of that with respect to x. Well, this is just a constant. And we, so we, we could pull this out of the derivative. And the derivative of the natural log of x, as we already know, is 1 over x. So this becomes r over x. So now, since we, when we take the derivative of both of these, we get the same result. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the integration of these functions will what? They're going to differ by a constant. Right? Since the derivatives of these two functions are the same, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, they must be uh, differ by a constant, right? So what do we have? We have um, the natural log of x to the r equals. Oh, how do I do this? Um, yeah equals r times the natural log of x plus some constant. Okay, so let's find out what that constant is. So what do we do? Um, let's just pick a value for x, right? This has to be true for all values of x, right? So let's just pick a value of x. Let's choose 1. Okay, well, X, one to the r, one to the r is just one. Natural log of one is zero. 
Uh, the natural log of 1 is 0 here, so we get r times 0 plus 0, or not 0, plus c. And so what do we get? Well, this is just 0, so we get c equals 0. And we've got the, the we completed the proof. We just proved that the natural log of x to the r equals r times the natural log of x, and so that completes the proof. And then, of course, the, the one that I skipped um, follows from both the, um, the other two proofs that I did. Okay, so the, this property that the natural log of A over B um, equals the natural log of A minus uh, the natural log of B follows from those other two proofs. So I'm not going to do that proof. Um, it follows from the other two proofs I did because you can look at um, this as the natural log. Okay, and I'll just show you this and then you can do it on your own. This can be equal to the natural log of a times b to the negative 1. And so now you can use those other two proofs, those other two properties to show that this indeed um, is equal to this. Okay, and that's it. Have a great day.